how to poach a fish. Today I'm going to be poaching a piece of salmon. What you'll need to start out with is a um, fairly large pan. This is called a sautuse pan and it has a nice fitting lid. Um, any kind of poaching pan will do. Um, you can buy specialty fish poaching pans that are probably more rectangular or oblong but this works just fine. Um, what you need is the lid because it is a type of steaming. You also need something to keep the fish out of the liquid. So I used two um, little wire racks that I put in there. You want the fish to stay out of the liquid while it's steaming. And keeping in mind while we're talking about it, um, if you're doing a small thin fish like let's say sole or something like that, it's going to take probably a fraction of the time that it would take to do a thicker fish like a salmon. And it all depends how thick the cut is and the important thing is to remember to always check for flaking from time to time so you don't overcook and make the fish dry. That's the main complaint people have about home cooked fish is that it's so dry that they hate it. So it's all a matter of how you cook it and if you learn how to cook fish the right way, it will become one of your favorites. So I'm going to go chop and I'll be back. Okay, just because I like to do that, I decided I would sweat the onions and the minced garlic in just a little smidge of olive oil. How big is a smidge? I have no idea. I just put in a little bit and I sweat the onions and the garlic to kind of bring out the flavor but these aren't going to be used for the dish per se they're just really a flavoring so I just chunk them up pretty much in like strips and now I'm going to just sweat them for a bit and I'll be back again okay I have some fresh dill here that I purchased yesterday at the supermarket because it is um, canning pickling time so I was able to get this huge piece of dill. As you can see this is folded in half actually. But I'm going to use a couple of fresh sprigs off of here and put them into my poaching liquid. Then I'm going to cut the rest of this and put it in my food dehydrator and make my own dried dill. And that would be my dog Griffin in the background in case you were wondering. So I'm going to add <laughs> the dill Make him be quiet, and I shall be right back. Okay, I'm getting my piece of salmon ready. Uh, as you can see, this is a pretty uh, consistent piece. It's the same thickness throughout, although it does taper down here um, towards the bottom side of the fish. My onions are done sweating. Now I'm going to start adding the other ingredients. Alrighty, I'm back. Griffin loves salmon. What can I say? It's always a problem. So, I have now my sprigs of uh, dill, fresh dill, within the poaching liquid. I have my sweated onions and garlic, and I've added a few teaspoons of soy sauce, low sodium. Not that it will matter because it's not touching the fish. Remember, this is just poaching it for flavor. But I've got some um, low sodium soy sauce mixed with water. And now I'm going to add my secret ingredient. I don't drink hard liquor, but I like to cook with it. So I use vermouth, extra dry. And I can tell you that I have done sweet vermouth, I've done dry vermouth, and each has its own flavor, but I really like vermouth for fish. So I've used about half cup, quarter cup, third cup, something like that. And I'm just adding that to the liquid and then I stir it all around put in my um, little racks and then add my fish and turn up the heat so I will be right back after I do that alrighty we're ready to rock and roll I have the ingredients for the poaching liquid inside my sauteuse I have my piece of salmon with a little sprinkling, tiny sprinkling of kosher salt because there won't be any soy sauce that touches this fish. 
because it's above the liquid as you can see by the racks. So the final touch is I will probably just sprinkle on a little bit of lemon, fresh lemon, and give it a go. I'm going to increase the heat till it just boils, cover it, and then check it every few minutes to see how it's flaking. I'll be back. Just a little FYI, if you can see the two little holes there on this pan, which is called a Satu's pan, it allows the steam to escape even though you can't see it. It's actually giving it some air. So that's just a great pan for many purposes. See you in a few. Alrighty, as you can see, that did not take long at all to get up to the boiling point. And that's what I'm talking about. You have to be really careful with this that it doesn't overcook it and, in effect, boil it to death. Even though it's only steam, it can still overcook it. So, I'm putting the lid back on, and I'll see you in another few. And also keep in mind, you can always add other flavorings to the water. You can add uh, carrots or celery to give more flavor, or a broth of some kind, like vegetable broth. Alright, we're going... I will be back in a few again. Alright, here is our finished poached piece of salmon. And I can tell you it took about five to seven minutes, and that's all when it began to flake. And the important thing to remember is that it will cook some more after you remove it, especially if you cover it with foil for a little bit. So you want it to air on the side of just about almost right there done as opposed to overdone. So serve this with brown rice mixed with oh maybe some walnuts or uh, almonds and like a pilaf or with some celery mixed in or vegetables. Um, you can also serve this with a green salad. A white wine would be perfect with this and maybe some steamed green beans or steamed carrots. You have a fabulous low cal, no fat added to the meat, nothing meal. And it's an easy way to do it, as you can see. It wasn't very complicated. So try it and enjoy. Thanks for watching.